All right, guys. Um, well, welcome to another video. Look, today an opportunity has come up where I'm going to be covering about 200 kilometers. So I thought, what better opportunity than this one to actually fill up the shark to full in terms of um, 95 octane petrol and um, go with whatever battery I have. And that was I left home with 100%. But by the time I got to the servo, I was about 89%, um, I think it was. And so this test is going to be basically an 89% battery plus a full tank of fuel. Um, HEV, so hybrid mode, driving in normal driving mode. Um, I've got the air conditioning and heating turned on for this test. And I'm going to do a drive basically from home and run my day commute and come back tonight and see what the average fuel is. So if you haven't seen in my uh, other video I uploaded the other day, I did a full test driving around with an empty battery on um, around Mornington Peninsula, so an area where I live. And I did about 200 kilometers for the day and we had an average of less than seven liters to 100. That's with no charging. So that was really impressive. And I noticed, um, when I did this test, because I noticed after the 2.1 update in the BYD Shark 6 here in Australia, fuel was just getting better. I couldn't understand it. What would, what was going on with my fuel gauge was just going down slowly compared to how I'm used to on this particular routine um, the other week. And, and then in another routine that I do where I do about 300 kilometers in a day and the fuel just didn't, it didn't bite through the fuel like it normally has in the past pre 2.1. Now, if you don't know what the 2.1 update is, it's actually the towing update. There's another video in the corner now that will take you, um, give you a bit of information about that update. What they didn't tell us is that they optimized the fuel in any way, or at least nothing that I, I read that, that there was a fuel update. So there's some type of profile slash algorithm update uh, in the BYD Shark 6 2.1 update, and I'm just trying to figure out exactly what that is. First footnotes that are really important, if you're a big watcher on our channel, you would have heard pre 2.1, I was always saying, yeah, you should sit around 50 to 60% state of charge in save. I found that to be generally the best and then sticking it into EV only mode when you're at the end of your um, your end of your drive to utilize the battery to zero to maximize economy. That's now all changed. If you want to maximize fuel economy, it's now sitting the car in auto, so no save option and driving around. The car actually sitting on 25% is no longer an issue. The, the, the generator doesn't run um, for you know, high RPM to try and keep charge up. It's actually very, very subtle now. And you'll also find in auto that the battery doesn't just sink. So when you used to put it in auto, if you had 60% state of charge, it would slowly chew away at your battery till it got to 25 and then the generator would turn on and run kind of a high RPM to maintain state of charge. Doesn't seem to do that now. Now it kind of just chews away at it a little bit. Sometimes it just hovers around 40%. Sometimes it climbs back to 50%. And it seems like looking at the scan gauge, the engine RPMs are sitting anywhere from 16, 1700 RPM to kind of 2300 RPM when there's no demand. And I think that's the optimal range for the motor to run. So the fuel economy is actually gonna be better because it's, it's all about how many liters to X amount of kilowatts it can generate. And now BYD have seemed to have tuned that so it's in its best range, which is how it should have been from the start. I don't know why it wasn't. So anyway, I'll start this commute. Um, You'll be able to see I've reset the scan gauge, putting my fuel, da uh, fuel data into it. So we've got, got reset statistics. Um, the shark is uh, being reset too. It's not going to be, we're not going to talk, like we're not going to drag out this video. It's just literally this information now. And then you guys will just get the results. Yeah, some things to note. Uh, if you're in hybrid mode, so HEV mode, even at 100%, Generally, the shark won't actually use the generator. What if you turn it on to, to trickle charge or charge the battery system will provide direct power to the electric motors. It's only once it gets to around about 70% um, before it actually does anything. It's very normal. So don't panic if you're like, oh, I want to sit at 100%. I didn't want to use any battery and I was in HEV. It did keep charged. That's normal. The car logic for probably battery maintenance reasons always wants to dip it from 100 down to 70 before the petrol generator kicks in for anything. Electric cars don't work the same as, as uh, ICE cars in the sense of you'll get better economy at higher speeds. So we don't have a gearbox in the shark. 
uh, one reduction gear and the engine's kind of optimized perfectly to around about 70 ish kilometers an hour on stock tires from what i've seen anything over that and the electric motors have to apply what they call fuel weakening which uses more power uh, to basically power them continue powering the motor at a higher rpm it's a bit of a science you can just do a bit of googling on it if you want to understand how that works but because of this what you need to understand is the electric motor it starts to become less and less efficient past that 70 80 kilometer an hour mark as it goes up to say 110 kilometers an hour now byd hybrids seem to have a a direct drive from the petrol generator motor to the front axle only mechanically above this speed and it, it it obviously decides on its own when it wants to engage it when it doesn't want to engage it my assumption is that that actually is more optimal to do than having electric motors ran with fuel weakening applied um, in terms of power consumption so that's why they've done that just a guess though that um, and that's why you'll find when you're driving around town kind of under 80 k's an hour the shark's kind of quite optimal for a three ton plus car I mean eight liters to 100 now is it's quite acceptable and you've got to realize also 70 k's onwards you know you've got wind resistance and all these other physics come into play which affect fuel economy so um, probably one thing I should mention all these tests are based on all the mods I got in my car so my car's currently got two seven five uh, 65 18s so about one percent larger than factory they're a rugged terrain so they're not a highway terrain tire I've got a roof rack I've now got a bull bar so there's a few things here that probably are affecting the economy so you're gonna if you don't have any of this you're probably gonna get better than these, these results here or you should get better than these results here um, today's drive is kind of 70% 100, 100 kilometers an hour and 30% um, less than 80 k's an hour so and we should cover over 200 k's today easily so it should be an interesting test because the battery would would normally have definitely run out by about 60 70 k's an hour uh, 60 70 k's in distance so we're looking at about 100 and, um, 130 to 140 k's of hybrid distance we have to include and that'll be mixed in with everything the whole point is i leave from home with hgv knowing that i'm going to do much further than what the electric battery can do on its own and see what type of fuel i use after the 2.1 update and also compare what the scan gauge reports as fuel used compared to what the sharks system reports as fuel used now my understanding is the scan gauge probably uses injector pulses uh, information to determine fuel usage how is the scan gauge referencing i'm not sure but what i actually do also um what i will also do at the end of this is fill the car up again to um, at the same servo same bowser to the first click and see how much fuel we put in so i can cross reference that off the trip meter that we do today to actually figure out a, a third reference point to fuel consumption and i think today's 200 plus drive is going to be the closest example of a real world case daily use if you are outside that ev only range all right guys we're almost at the end of our day today it's uh what time is it why uh 5 how many k's have i done i'm just checking just had to come over and pick up my young one because i've got to take him somewhere which is we've had a combination of things today pretty much up until this point this is my normal routine um, and I've done uh, about 190 kilometers so close to about 200 I'm just on 22% battery at the moment haven't charged haven't charged at all so and look at the moment I'm on for the last 50 kilometers it's reporting about 10.56 liters to 100 so that's that's pretty pretty good I just thought I'd put the camera on now because, you know, this is kind of the end of my regular routine, but I kind of wanted to also acknowledge kind of where we are at with the economy side of things. Because from here onwards, it, it only gets better. And, and it gets better because the drive I'm about to do now, which will be about another 10 kilometers, is only going to be speed 60, 60 and 70. That's it. And the, the shark should technically just start dropping in, um, the shark should just start dropping in economy now. Well, improving in economy, should I say? I actually reckon a um, 
a stock shark. So row tires, no roof rack, uh, not oversized tires, no ball bar. I reckon you get less than 11 easily. You might even get 10.5, 11, yeah, 10.5, 11, I reckon, at 100 k's an hour on just fuel burning with no battery. So take uh, what you will from this data and um, we'll get where to drop him off and head over to the Bowser and see what we get. White doesn't even know what's going on, do you? No. I, um, I'm, they did an update, the software update the car, mm. and it's improved how much fuel it uses when I'm not got electric. So we're just trying to, well, I'm trying to prove that it's better to people. That's my whole point of this test today. And so far, it's proving that it's better in, it is better in overall mixed conditions. I'm actually even seeing a very slight improvement on the highway. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a lot, so it's, it's consistent with how I felt it would be like that there wouldn't be a big improvement. I think I suggested in a comment on my video around Mornington Peninsula on Sunday that I reckon there'll be, if anything, a 5% increase. And I think it is about that. All right, over to the same Bowser, which is the one at the front here on the left. I'll chuck some 95 in and we'll see how we go. First click. Video proof, so you guys can hear the first click. There you go. 17.93 litres. Alright. We put in... 17.93 litres. Scan gauge says we put 18.07. And the car says we use 16 litres so yeah it's interesting variation there shark says the least amount of fuel used scan gauge says the most amount of fuel used but the bowser reports 17.93 litres filled so if we chuck this information into chat gpt we'll be able to figure out what the average truly is According to the shark, it reckons, well, I mean, it's, it's hard to actually say, because what the shark reckons for the whole 200 kilometers, we can't, it doesn't report, because it only shows us the past 50 kilometers. But the scan gauge is basically saying we did an average of 9.24 liters to 100 for this 195 kilometers of distance. Before I go too far guys, so because I've put fuel in again, I go into the scan gauge and I basically say I've put a full tank in. Um, I paid $1.98 per litre. Hit save, fuel complete, gives me my average data. I take a photo of that, but since I have a video, I'll just keep that. And that's basically how I use the scan gauge. All right, so you guys have all the data now. I mean, this is a pretty rough test. It's not a perfect test because obviously there are other factors involved, like how I drive, etc. I drove normally today. There was nothing special about today's driving. I just made sure to try and do the speed limit where, you know, where it was applicable. Didn't try and do anything extra other than the normal drive. And that's kind of the result I got. 